Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Roundy, and today I have your notes presentation. We're calling these this presentation Ratification or Bust. And as always, it was created by me, Mr. Roundy, need I say more. This sort of thing ain't my bank, baby. Let's start out with some vocabulary. Our first vocabulary term is ratification. Ratification is a noun and it just means approval. After the Constitution was created at the Constitutional Convention and they had their, you know, different compromises that they made, they were sent back to all the states for ratification or to be approved. To ratify just means to approve something. Our next word is amend. Now, amend means to change or alter. And an amendment is a change or alteration or addition to the Constitution or any other document. So if we add an amendment, we've added something onto it that wasn't originally there. So, when the Constitution was drafted and made at the Constitutional Convention, it was sent back to the states. And, like everything, there were some people who liked it and some people who didn't. And there were really two opposing sides when it came to the Constitution. And it became quite the battle. The first group were known as the Federalists, and the Federalists were supporters of the Constitution. And the Federalists were squaring off against the Anti-Federalists. Now, Federalists favored a strong federal or national government. They thought we needed a government for the whole country, not just to have things be run by the states. They supported the new Constitution. They're the ones who wanted the new Constitution ratified by all the states. They were a better organized group than the Anti-Federalists. They had a lot more people behind them. They set up printing presses and pamphlets and came up with like a way to distribute information about the Constitution to gain support for it. They also had some key supporters on their side. They had George Washington and Ben Franklin who were supporting the new Constitution, wanted people, wanted the states to adopt this new Constitution for the whole country that gave us a stronger national government for the whole country. And finally, people who were on the Federalist side were afraid of disorder and rebellion. Things like Shays' Rebellion scared them really bad. And so they wanted to make sure that things like Shays' Rebellion would not happen again. So, let's go over to the Anti-Federalists. The Anti-Federalists favored strong state government or local government. They didn't want a government over the whole country that could tell the different states what to do. They thought that was bad. These guys were kind of going back to the times before where all the states had been in charge of themselves, and they thought that was the best way to keep things going. They were very much against the new constitution because the new constitution created a stronger national government, which they didn't think was a good idea. They thought the states should be left to take care of themselves. They thought the constitution would take away people's rights, that it would make it so people were less free because the national government could tell people in every state what to do and the states wouldn't have as much power. They were a lot less organized. They didn't have the kind of the campaign that the Federalists did. Uh, these were people who were mostly like farmers and countrymen and people who didn't have quite that same level of organization to try and support their cause. They did have a few strong supporters. One of their key strong supporters was a guy named Thomas Jefferson, who some of you probably remember was the writer of the Declaration of Independence. Now, the Anti-Federalists were not as afraid of disorder and rebellion as the Federalists were. Shays' Rebellion they saw as possibly a good thing. It helped to keep the states in check and remind them that they needed to take care of the people and also work with the other states so that they could have trade and commerce work a little bit better and help their economies. But they thought rebellion was actually not a bad thing. But they did fear big government. They didn't want a big, strong national government that could come in and take people's rights away. So, the debate began between the two. Now, this debate went on between the Federalists and Anti-Federalists. And as I said earlier, the Federalists were better organized. And they immediately began writing essays and arguments to help support their cause, to get people to support the new Constitution. 
there were three main people who were behind this Federalist movement, or three key individuals. Uh, there was James Madison, John Jay, and Alexander Hamilton. And they wrote a ser series of essays called the Federalist Papers. And these essays were argument essays meant to convince people why they should support the new Constitution. So here we've got a picture of James Madison. <clears throat> And he really, truly was a genius. His ideas were a key component. He was one of the main drafters of this new constitution that had been written. And so people just needed to realize he was a genius. We had John Jay. And no, John, it does not make you look fat. And we have Alexander Hamilton. Yes, you're right, Alexander. So... All of the states, once the new constitution had been drafted and sent to them for ratification, they all called special assemblies that had the right or power to vote on the ratification of the new constitution. And the different representatives from all parts of the state would come and be able to read over the constitution and debate it and decide whether or not they wanted to vote to ratify it. Now, there was one really key issue about the Constitution that kept some states from wanting to ratify. The key issue of the debate was that many felt the Bill of Rights needed to be added to the Constitution. Now, Bill of Rights is just a list of freedoms that are protected. Uh, we actually talk about these rights all the time. We're always saying, I have the right, I have freedom of speech, I can say what I want. Well, actually, you do. And the reason you have it is because it was put in a document called the Bill of Rights. Now, Federalists thought that they didn't need to have a written Bill of Rights, that these rights were inherent, everyone knew that we had them, and they didn't need to be written down. The Constitution would protect them anyway. However, Anti-Federalists were terrified that if these rights weren't written down in words as part of the document to show and prove that they were rights that people got, then they would get taken away. They're not written down, then they, then people in leadership later on could say, nope, you don't get those rights, it's not written anywhere that you get that, and they could take it away. As I said earlier, Thomas Jefferson was an important anti-federalist. He was in strong favor of state government rather than national government, and definitely thought that they needed to have a Bill of Rights. Remember, he talked about unalienable rights in the, Consti or in the Declaration of Independence. And so he knew that those rights needed to be written down and explained. Why, yes, you did, Thomas. You did write the Declaration of Independence, and people probably should listen to you. So the Declaration, or not the Declaration, the Constitution went out to the states. And Delaware was the first state to ratify the new Constitution. They very quickly adopted it, said, yes, we support this, and they ratified it and approved the new Constitution. Now, in order for the new Constitution to take effect, they had to have nine out of the 13 different states ratify the Constitution. Once that happened, then the new government, the new federal government, could go into effect. New Hampshire was the ninth state to ratify the Constitution. Once they did that, then the Constitution was officially able to take effect. However, this meant that four of the states still had not ratified, and by not ratifying, they were not accepting this new Constitution. Now, the new, Consti the new Constitution could go into effect, but it was still missing two very important states. Now, like I said, there were four states missing, but two of them were incredibly important states that really needed to ratify if this was going to work. So, who were these holdouts? The two main holdouts were Virginia and New York. And the reason they were important is they were the two largest states in the United States at the time. And they still hadn't ratified. They finally agreed to ratify once leaders from all the states agreed that they would add a Bill of Rights to the Constitution. And New York barely ratified. Their vote was very close, but they managed to get the vote they needed so that they could ratify the Constitution. And really, the only reason that they were able to get that 
is because New York City, the largest city in their state, threatened to leave the state if they didn't ratify. The people of New York said, nope, we'll just kind of make our own little uh, state here, and then we'll ratify it and leave the rest of you behind. And the whole state of New York didn't want to lose New York City, so they were able to get enough votes to ratify the Constitution. In 1790, Rhode Island was the last state to ratify. Now you got to remember, we wrote the Declaration of Independence in 1776, so this took quite a long time after the Revolutionary War, which ended in 1783 with the Treaty of Paris. So this was 17 years after the end of the Revolutionary War that we finally get the last state to ratify our new Constitution. When all of the states had ratified, all over the country there was a celebration. There were parades held, and they celebrated that the fact that they had created a new government for the whole country. Well, they'd had a government before the Articles of Confederation, but as we know, that was a total flop. Now, the one thing that they had promised was that they would add a Bill of Rights. And with the Constitution, the Constitution was set up so that it could be modified and changed over time if need be. And so the writers of the Constitution made it possible to change or amend the Constitution. That's part of the rules that are set up in the Constitution is what needs to happen in order for it to be changed or have things added to it. And the first thing they did was add a Bill of Rights. So after the ratification, Congress proposed 12 amendments, 12 changes or additions to the Constitution. Ten of those amendments were ratified by all the states and became known as the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights is some of our very common freedoms that we talk about today. We have the freedom of speech, the freedom of press, the freedom of religion. Those are just part of the First Amendment to the Constitution or the First Amendment in the Bill of Rights. Big fat bummer. So... We've reached the end of our presentation on the ratification of the Constitution. Our country did ratify the Constitution, and it has been in effect since 1790 when our final state finally ratified and adopted this new Constitution. So it's been around for quite a long time. And over the course of all that time, we've had 27 amendments added or changed on the Constitution. So been quite the amazing time. Hope you had a good time. Hope it was nice for you probably to hear my voice because it's so melodious and wonderful. And have a great day.